It's a pretty well-known story around here how the great train station was built when St. Louis was still one of the largest and busiest cities in the country. For decades, how this was the main entrance to St. Louis for travelers and immigrants. But then came the era of air travel and super highways, until just a few trains were coming and going, and in 1978, how the great station was shut down. And then, how it was reborn. A massive renovation turned it into a hotel shopping tourism complex. And while it is facing some challenges 20 years later, it is still a centerpiece of downtown St. Louis, still a great landmark, well worth exploring. Francis Persich, the marketing director for Union Station, exactly. and maintenance man Brad Mandrell are about to take us on a tour. It's a 65-foot barrel vaulted ceiling, of course, Union Station. We stopped to overlook the magnificent Grand Hall, the railroad station waiting room turned hotel lobby. But it's not really what we came for. We're heading for the clock tower. Brad unlocks the door, and we leave behind the restored public areas to go into the attic. No more elevators. It's all climbing from here on up. We're almost to where you'll be able to see the top of, right. or the ceiling of Grand Hall. Yeah. Um, you'll also see that part of the Up here you can see like how the Grand Hall's ceiling is suspended right. by yes. beams and cables um, from Union Station's soaring tiled roof. Right. You can see where the bright lights are at the very uh -huh. top. Those are fluorescent bulbs that shine on the stained glass window that we saw when we were down below. So this is really, truly the attic here. Yes, it is. Although it looks like it's space that could have been used at some point for could something. Could have been used, and of course in the revitalization that we're working on now um, is certainly in our thought process. Of uh, this we're just about to the entrance of the clock tower, but there's one more place she wants to show us. Elevated. One <laughs> important piece of great Union beans, Station lore lies. she wants to share. Can I secure it for myself? Uh -huh. Right. Okay, so this is... This is the old safe or vault for... Vaults. There were quite a few vaults. You have to realize that in the time um, you that... You want to go first? <laughs> Union Station's heyday as a passenger rail terminal, everything was coins. Right. So you, you would come into a vault like this and it would literally be thousands and millions of yeah. coins. Oh, that, i got to tell you right now, it's, it's a little scary. <laughs> this thing. Now, and you are telling me there's, there, there's a ghost story going around well, there. Well, they say that George, the keeper of the keys, um, loved Union Station so much that um, he didn't want to leave. This they is say not he's just still a marketing around. tool. No, is it? it is not a marketing tool. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, but um, he seems to hang out um, around our offices. <laughs> now, have you heard the jangling keys? I uh, hear goofy and strange noises, but I haven't heard any keys or coins yet. Okay. <laughs> and now finally, we get to the staircase okay. that gets us into the clock right. tower. Right. This is as high as I've ever been. Is that right? Yes. So this is your first time here then? The, as I never came up this high. So this is now here's what surprised me about the tower. It does, or it did, have some practical functions other than just holding a clock. This is a valve for a sprinkler system, which was fed by a large water tank several stories up. Well, it's 233 feet high. The tower also helped ventilate the station. But it didn't really need to be this tall to do all of that. The tower, like Union Station itself, was a powerful symbol. Now, that's hardly new. Even when they were part of defensive walls, towers conveyed a message of strength and power. And there were times later when wealthy families would make sure their palaces made the same statement, with your tower maybe a little bigger than the next guy's. Centers of political power had their towers, and like the bells in church steeples, they might also tell the time. These towers of the olden days inspired some of the designs of the train stations of the 19th century. These were, after all, in their own ways, palaces of technology and progress. 
and cities were making statements with these grand railway stations. St. Louis certainly was in the 1890s, and the clock tower was the exclamation point. We got another kind of inside view of the tower from Sonia McDonald at Washington University Library's archives, which houses the plans for Union Station. We have approximately 1,500 drawings of the original construction through 1960. And, and you brought out the, the clock tower for us? Yes. Okay, I'll let you... Uh... It shows the staircases and the workings of the original weight and pendulum clock. And this... But this drawing is dated 1916, more than 20 years after the original station construction. And, then here are the beams. and this is actually the plans for the 30,000-gallon water tank and the supporting beams, a tower built inside a tower. That must have been tricky work. And again, these steps are original, the right. railings are original, um, so you don't want right. to trust rickety. it. Yeah. So now we're, I guess we're coming up to the uh, water tank here, is that what? The underneath side of it, yeah. Yeah. Well, when wow. you consider that it was to hold all the water for the sprinkler system, right. it had to be huge. So this is what fed, this was just for the sprinkler system then, right? Yes. Wow. So they'd pump the water up and, do you know if they ever had to use it? Not to my knowledge, there's never been a fire here. Right. Above the water tank, which is now empty, is really the main floor of the clock tower. That's where the clocks are. Actually, it's one clock with four faces. So these are, these are, the, these are the clock faces here. Those are the clock faces. And, and this is the, uh, the Although it's now driven by an electric motor, there is still the little wooden building that houses what's left of the old mechanical works. It was a hand-done daily a weight and pendulum system. So somebody system. actually has so to pull the weight back up. Each day to wind the clock. This is the back side of the clock face. The, it's 8 to 10 feet in diameter, each face of the clock. The clocks weren't running today. The motor was out for maintenance. But that wasn't the disappointment here. That was one level up. Oh, ah, here's the payoff. I was expecting after this long climb to be rewarded with great views of the city. You see, I imagine that I might just step out on that balcony. And it turns out that that's just an optical illusion. It's an architectural detail. There is no balcony. It is just a ledge. I was hoping we could uh, look out, but there doesn't seem to be a way to... Uh... I don't know how they've done this. There is a slanted section at the base of those covered archways where Brad says you used to be able to look out. This just, it doesn't... Well, maybe that was before they were covered with sheets of opaque plastic. He says there used to be some fantastic views from up here, but this is really as good as we could get, this little corner where the plastic had torn away. Well, this is the end of our tour, I guess, and this is as far as... We want to go, or can go, I suppose. There really wasn't much else to do now at the top. Of course, Just we go, go down. back down. A long climb that confirms one thing. This is not a lookout tower. It is what it was always meant to be, a look-at tower.